Guys, I have like 20 minutes to do this review because I need to go. Um, I know I've been away for so long, but so much has been happening with these books. So after I finished American Psycho, I didn't know what to read next. So I read The Tales Behind Tarot. Um, I would go grab it right now, but it's so far away. Um, and I finished like the major arcana part of it. I don't know if I'll ever do a review on it. I think I will once I finish the whole book. But it's one of those books where you can like read like here and there and it's fine. Um, even though it's two continuous storylines. If you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and it was still October and I was like, what else can I read that's scary? Um, so I was going to read Absolution when it came out um, by Jeff Vandermeer. I've already done the review on Annihilation, um, Authority, and Acceptance, which is the Southern Reach trilogy by Jeff Vandermeer. Oh my god, those three books were really good to me. The first one better than the last two. But I was so excited for this book to come out. And when it came out on October 22nd, I was literally one of the first... Just kidding. I was not one of the first people. I got to the bookstore as fast as I could on that day and I bought the book and I literally didn't think that I was not going to like it and after reading 100 pages of it I was so disappointed because I had been waiting for this book for like four years because I, I found out that he had been writing it like since 2019 or like 2020 and so I was like so excited for it I was like oh my god I was like because this series is so good and like for him to completely break the name the southern Reach trilogy to make a fourth book is just saying a lot you know um yeah i didn't like it at all it was it, i was falling asleep and like i was starting to nod off into space and it just felt like i was just reading words and then I saw reviews from other people. I'm like, am I am I tripping out? Or is this like what other people are experiencing? Come to find out, a lot of people were feeling the same way too. They were saying the third part of it was like the worst. And I'm like, the third part? I'm at the first part and I already don't like it like at all. Um, Because it was like very confusing. It was very like... It was just too hard to understand and to enjoy. Do you know what I mean? So I dodged a bullet by just DNFing it. I was so upset because the new cover is so beautiful and I really wanted to like it. Don't let beautiful covers trick you, you guys. Don't let beautiful covers trick you. So then what happened was after that, I, I was like, I have to redeem myself because like I, I better have a, a stroke of good luck with this because... I can't buy two books back to back that were not good. Oh, and then also I read Wicked. I did not like it. After like 60 pages, I was like, this is not for me. Like, I DNF that too. Um, I'll watch the movie and I'm talking about the book. I've never seen the musical and I'm going to see and I'm going to see the movie, so don't get all offended. But I don't know, the book just wasn't for me. So I had already two uh, DNFs in a row and I was just like, this is not going the way that I want it to. And so um, I was like, okay, I know the American Psycho Writer is good. So I'm going to take a chance on this. And I've been wanting to read this since 2023. When did it come out? Yeah, 2023. So this is my review for The Shards um, by Brett Easton Ellis. And before I get into this, I'm going to mention one more thing, just in case I forget to mention it. Um, after I read The Shards, I didn't know what to read after, and I really didn't want a... I started reading a little bit of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, and I was enjoying it, but I don't know if I have the power in me to like read, what is it, like 600 pages of that? I love the concept, like it's so smart, but I don't. I might be a little too slow for me and I don't know if I have the patience for it. So, and you know how much I hate third person. So, but there are always exceptions where I can read a story that's in third person, 
but I do prefer first person. Anyways, um, I didn't want to do a book that was very viral on Book Talk or Bookstagram, Book Two, whatever we're calling it now. Um, no pumpkin anything. Yes, I'll eat that, but no pumpkin book anything, please. Um, I already had enough of the fall vibes with. I already had enough of the fall vibes with. Um, sorry, my leg was touching the table. I already had enough fall vibes with Agatha all along, and I know I didn't do a video on that. I don't think I will, but whatever. Um, I was like, let me see what's out there. And I saw this book by Parker S. Huntington. I really liked My Dark Romeo, and for some reason, it's getting a lot of views on my channel, um, which is good. But I really loved My Dark Romeo. I don't know what it is about it. I just did. And so I was like, okay, let me take a chance. I know she had a co-author in that one. And in this one that I purchased from her, she didn't. I was taking a huge risk because there are no Google previews for this on Google. And if you know me really well, you know that I use Google previews to see if I'm really going to like a book. And it has saved me so much money because I have not pursued so many books that I thought I was going to like because I didn't like the Google previews of them. They showed you like 30 pages sometimes, depending on how long, how many pages the book is. It might be shorter. It might be like 10 or 15 um, pages of an excerpt that you get. So from there, you can kind of see. Honestly, to me, if my rule is like, unless I want to be super nice, like for Wicked, I was too nice because um, I really wanted to enjoy it, but I didn't. So I forced myself to enjoy it and I didn't. Um, if I don't like the book by like, I don't know, 30 pages, I feel like 30 pages is a good amount. If I don't like the book by like 30 pages, then I'm not going to continue to pursue it. It's kind of like watching a show and everyone saying, oh, just wait till you get to episode eight and nine. Like, no. Like, no, like, I'm not going to tell someone, oh, like, Agatha All Along wasn't good, but, like, episode 89 was good, so it'll get better. Like, no. I thought the whole show was good, as by the way, but I'm just saying, like, it just, okay, so you want me to waste seven hours of my life just so that I can get to the two at the final, at the finale that I do like? It just, like, it doesn't make sense. Like, our time is too precious, you guys. Like, stop. So... I took a huge risk on this, and once again, yeah, the cover made me want to buy it. I'm so stupid. I did not like this. I did not like this at all. Um, I don't, like, I don't know who talks about this book. This is Devious Lies. Mind you, it's like 700 pages. Devious Lies by Parker S. Huntington. Her co-author, LJ Shen, is not in this one that she wrote My Dark Romeo with. This is what the spine looks like in the back. Um, if... I am selling it, so if any of you guys want it, like, let me know. It's on my Poshmark. Um, I don't know if I'm going to link my Poshmark in this video, but I think my Poshmark is linked in other videos. It's just my name, my middle initial, and my last name, which is the same as my YouTube username, if that makes sense. So this is for sale on my Poshmark. Um, this is the cover. I mean, like, what is that? I was fooled by the cover and never will it happen again. This is why I use Google previews. But yeah, I love the cover and I like the font. It's actually pretty cool. Um, I hate stark white pages. I hate them. I don't know why it's so stark white. If you guys want to see what it looks like, um, like that. I hate when people don't show like what the pages look like. Like, I want to know what the pages look like. Stop. Um, so they look like that. Um, so I DNF that. I said, no, ma'am, no, sir. So then I've already read this in high school, middle school, high school, whatever. Um, and I've had the box set since uh, 2020 during that whole era. Um, I just never reread it. I reread Matched at the beginning of this year. And I felt like I had to end the year by finishing the series. And so I didn't read Crossed. I read like 20 pages of Crossed and I was like, mm, yeah, this is this is why I didn't like it. I don't I don't know what it is, but I remember when I first read Crossed, I didn't like 
the setting. I didn't like them being in the canyons. I don't know what it is about it. I like to go to canyons. That's not what I'm saying. It's just, I don't know what it is about Crossed. I just don't enjoy it. I just don't enjoy reading Crossed. I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know what it is. I just didn't enjoy reading Crossed at all from the Match series. And so after I read the first 20 pages, I'm telling you, I've already read the book, so I've, I already know what happens. Um, I, I rarely reread books, like, ever. I think Matched was one of the first books I reread, and I think I reread Twilight before. But anyways, I looked at some summaries on Crossed just to kind of help me recap, and I was like, oh, okay, I got this down online. And then I jumped into Reached, and then I realized why... And then I remember why I liked this one so much. The covers are so vibe, like it's a vibe. It's so dystopian. This is the, I'm already like almost halfway done. This is the Dutton version. This is what it looks like. Um, and I have the box set. I bought it like as a box. And so that's what that looks like. So I'm just trying to get the lighting better. That's what that looks like. And I'm like halfway through. I'm loving this so much. I actually forgot so much about this one. I don't know why, but I do remember that I did like it and enjoy it. I love the setting of this so much. It's like all over the place. Um, literally, they go everywhere. As opposed to Cross, where it was like the canyons and like that of provinces. It's just like, I don't know what it is. I couldn't deal. So I'm reading that now. If you want an update on what I'm reading right now. The writing is so simple. Okay, I'm not going to get into the review of this because... I am here to talk about the shards. You guys, this book, as I leave this in the back, very cutesy. Um, just kidding. Um, this, so this is very meta. This is very, very, very meta. This is apparently a fictional story. I know so he doesn't get sued, but... This is a fictional story about Brett, the author, his experience of basically his teen life in California. It was so weird. I'm not going to get into that, but it's allegedly a fictional story. Okay. But this is very me to do. He puts himself as the main character in this fictional story with his name. With his name, I love that. Like, I love that. I love that. Just from knowing that, like, that already, like, it's already five stars. And I don't rate books five stars. I don't rate books by, by stars. But, like, that already, like, guaranteed you. And then the cover is very, like, my aesthetic. So, like, duh. And then here, the spine in the back. I got this from, from Barnes & Noble directly. So it looks like this. And yeah, it's 600 pages. Oh, and this is what the pages look like. This is like the color tone. It's like a little bit, it's like very similar to American Psycho. Um, but yeah, it doesn't feel big at all. Like this does not feel big at all, but it's 600 pages. Yeah, it's basically 600 pages. It's like 595, 600, whatever. Um, the, the the color tones, the palette, the, the photo itself. The thing is, I don't know if this man is supposed to be Robert or Brett. I don't know. I don't know who it is. I know the cover for the alternate covers is supposed to be... Um, like the guy in the cold is obviously Matt. Anyways, I finished reading this like a week ago. It took me one week to read this because I have a job. So I can't read nonstop like, like I did during 2020. <clears throat> or else I would have finished it in like two days, three days, realistically. Um, okay, so I'm going to spoil the book now for you. So if you're scared of spoilers, get away. This, here's the thing. If you've read American Psycho, you know that this author is like the vibe. If you get the vibe, like you know what I'm talking about, like the bourgeois vibe um if you like that vibe you'll really enjoy this 
This takes place also in the 1980s, as did American Psycho, I believe, like, 19, like the late 1970s, late 19, 1980s. Um, I had no idea that I would enjoy books set in the 1980s so much. I think it really depends on the author and the style of the writing, because I very much am very, like, either, like, future or, like, modern. I don't really like things in the past. But, like, he makes it work. And I think it's because of, like, the designers and then just, like, the the vibe. Like, he really knows how to create that ambiance and the atmosphere of that bourgeois, like, that richness lifestyle. So I love that. Excuse me. Um, so I love that. And so <laughs> if you've read this book, what do you guys think? Like, I don't know what was going on. Like, there is no... There is no resolution. There is no resolution to this. And it kind of pissed me off, but like I don't but like I don't mind it too. Like we don't we don't know who killed all these people. We don't know if it was the trawler. We don't know if it was Brett and he's just like a completely different personality or he has like a serial killer personality or if it was um, that cult or girl, for all we know, it could have been American Psycho himself, uh, Patrick Bateman, right? Like at this point, it could have been Patrick Bateman and that would have been very meta for them to like do that, like a, a little multiverse moment there. I wanted to think it was Patrick Bateman. Do you know why I wanted to think the murderer here was Patrick Bateman? Because of the way that he killed um, the animals and the way that he killed, uh, the people in this book. It's very, very Patrick Bateman. It's very disgusting and just traumatizing and just like actually ridiculous. And so I'm calling it, it's Patrick Bateman or it's this guy's character. I really don't think it's him. Like that What it was just like, it won't make, I don't know. It just wouldn't make sense. And then even that whole thing with him having the what Susan thought was the bite mark on his arm is just like, I don't know, maybe she was saying things or maybe she was thinking that what she saw was something else when it wasn't, I don't know. And then Robert Mallory, I don't know if Brett was just jealous of him or if there was an actual reason for him to feel like that about him, I don't know. But in a way, in a way, I don't know how to explain it, but in a way, I did enjoy this more than American Psycho I think it's because American Psycho, I needed to take a couple breaks from it. Not like days break, but like several hours of like, okay, I need a moment to chill because it was just nothing but slayer, like slaughter, like constant slaying, constant grotesquery. It was just so much. I've never read a book like that. So it was just like so much. Um, so with this one, it did have aspects of that, but that's not really what the book is only about, if that makes sense. The characters are very complex and it was just so good. Like I can totally, Hollywood, please let me direct this one. Please let me direct this one. I will make this into a bestseller. I will make this into um, a number one at the box office, I promise you, because I know the exact vibe that the author is going with this. I know the exact vibe. It was so visual in my head. I was like, oh. But first, let me direct Matched by Ali Condi. And then we can do this one. Um, because that one's more primary goals. This one is just very vibey too. But like in a different, completely different, fashionable, vintage way. Um, I don't know what to say about it anymore. It's been like a week and a half since I read it. What do you guys think about the ending? Like, who was the one that was doing all this? Was it multiple people? Was every situation different? Who was the one that recorded that tape with Matt? Like, what is going on? Like, oh my god. If you don't like reading a book that's unsolved at the end, do not read this. But if I were me watching this, what I just said right now to you, don't let that fear you because it's still such a fun and enjoyable book. 
even though you don't get anything resolved really well certain things and then what happened to terry did he kill himself or like what happened i don't know i don't know the whole thing about terry is a very feels very very real like it happened to brett um i don't know what it is about it it just feels very la very very la i know a lot of people that didn't like the constant street naming and everything it's like very american psycho it's very american psycho um like with the restaurants and all that it's very american psycho i love it um not so much i don't love it so much but it's very very cool um because it really makes you feel like you're in L in california <sighs> how many times did he drive down Sep sepulveda is that how you say it sepulveda sepulveda i don't know how to say it um how many times did he drive down that road take a shot for like every time he does like a billion um I don't know I just really enjoyed it and I don't think I'll ever give this book away because it's so so good and I just I wish this could be I wish this could be a movie like I wish I could make it into a movie like someone hire me to make this into a movie please give me the money to do make this into a movie and I'll do it right I promise you um I'll, I'll the cast will be perfect the cast will be perfect I'm not telling you who I have the cast as in my head but the cast will be perfect just trust me on that oh hi um nash prescott in the back um so that's that i don't know what else to say um i don't know what book i'm going to review next oh it's probably gonna be reached probably this i'll probably finish this in a week it's another 500 page book but the there's less words in the pages in this than there are in every page in this um and then i don't know what i'm gonna read after this like oh i really don't know I really don't know what I'm going to read after that. Like, honestly. Okay. Um, have a great day, guys. Bye.